Hi there, it's Stephanie. This overview is going to review the published output of the template, take a look at Storyline, see how I built it, and then also take a look at an external HTML file that's needed to generate the PDF. So this is the published output, and the very first variation of a note is a draggable note. In the lower right corner is an icon that pops up. If I click on that, you'll see a little post-it note slides in. And what's cool here is that the note is draggable so you can just click drag it and drop it wherever you want it to go so if it's in the way you just move it around until you get it where you want it to be click directly on it and then you can type in your note when you're ready to close the note just click on the icon again and it's going to be concealed clicking the icon a second time is going to reveal it again open it back up where you left it off and with the information that you previously typed even if you go to a different slide and come back it's still going to behave that way so you can continue to add more information to any of the notes in this project. And an alternative way to close this note, if you just drag the note down to the bar at the bottom, it's also going to conceal it. If you click the icon again, remember that's going to position it back where you last dropped it, which was down here. So you might want to bring that back up. You can close it and continue on. The second variation is a slide in note and it behaves in a very similar fashion. You click the icon and it slides in from the right and you can see it's just blinking there, waiting for me to type in some information. And you can see the font size is a little bit bigger, and I can press enter, and there's a scroll bar on the right-hand side. So this note's designed for a longer note. If you click the right arrow, you can close it, and like the other, clicking this icon will display it again with the information you previously typed, and you can continue adding more to it. Okay, let's close that note and move on to the next example, which is a global notepad meaning that you can type a note no matter where you are in the project. So if you click Notepad, it'll come up in a light box and a similar layout, it's got the scroll bar and you can just type in your information and your notes as you go along. I'll just put in a little bit more here. And when you're finished, you just close the, the notepad and you're taken back to the slide that you're on. So if I were to move to another slide and then just use Notepad again, I can continue typing in some additional information. All right. Now, when it comes to viewing notes and being able to download that PDF, what I've done here is twofold. I have an option called My Notes. And in this case, all it's doing is it's lightboxing a slide that has all the notes that are used in this project. And not only can I see it, but I, I can add to it. And then when I'm ready to download my notes, I click the download button. If I just click it, it's going to open up the PDF. And you can see what it looks like. So it's grabbed the information in the draggable note in purple. It has a table format with two different fill colors for the slide in note and another variation of a table format uh, with a border for the global note. It has the logo, it has different colors and sizes of fonts and the date stamp as well. All right, so I'm just going to close that down and close the light box. If you want your RISE projects to have the ability to take notes, then you can just grab one or two slides and bring those into RISE. So an example here, if you click on the link, it's going to open up a published version of a RISE project. There are only two lessons in this project. Sample lesson is just generic. And the My Notes is using a storyline block so it looks pretty familiar, right? It has the three note fields. So I'm just going to type here and a little more here and a little bit more down here. And then when you're ready, you just click the download button and it's going to go ahead and it'll do the same thing. It'll generate that PDF. You see it's come up and it's given it a numbered name because there's already one in that location with the same name. But we're going to open this up so you can see what that looks like and identical format. Now the one caveat here is when you're doing this within Rise, the storyline blocks automatically refresh when you leave the lesson that the block is on. So if I go back over to the sample lesson and then I come back over to my notes, you'll notice it's completely blank. So you want to make sure if you're using this within Rise, people understand to click that download button to make sure they get a copy that is saved locally before they go back or navigate away from this slide. All right, I'm gonna close that. 
Okay, so I switched over to Storyline, and here you can see the project. Let's go over to Story View. You can see that there are three scenes. The first one has all the demonstrations of the variations of notes. The second has the global notepad, as well as the My Notes that shows you all three notes together and that download button. And the third is the Rise variation. It's basically a copy of 2.2 and 2.3, and I've just reformatted it for the screen because when you bring in a storyline object into Rise, it's going to create a white buffer around. So I'm just trying to reduce that white space a little bit. So why don't we start with the draggable note? And here you can see that the icon, when you click it, it's going to open up the layer called Take Note. This layer has two different hotspots. The larger hotspot is the area where you can drag this note to, and the smaller hotspot is that area where you can drag the note and it's going to close. And basically all it's doing is closing the layer, and you can see the triggers that are over here. They're very simple. The note itself is a data entry field. That data entry field has been formatted with yellow and a shadow to make it look like a post-it note. And the variable that it's using is called drag note. So if we move over to slide note, this is set up in a very similar fashion. So when you click the icon, it's going to open up the layer called slide note. We have a rectangle animating in from the right. The data entry field is sitting within a scrolling panel. And you can see that down in the timeline. You can open that up and you can see it sitting within the scrolling panel. And how I did that is I inserted a new data entry field and then I just dragged it on top of the scrolling box. You see in the timeline how it's not in the scrolling box yet, it's sitting on top of it. But if I place it kind of directly on top, it's going to go within it. And once that happens, then it's inside that scroll box and you can use your arrow keys on the keyboard to kind of position it around to where you want it to appear. This one is using the variable called slide note. And the global notepad, well, that's uh, launching a different slide as a light box from the player menu. So if we go over to 2.1 notepad, this is a slide that's light boxing, and it's set up in a very similar way. There's a scrolling panel, and there's a data entry field within the scrolling panel. The variable is called global note. When you click on My Notes from the top bar where it shows all three of the notes together, here they are. It's just lightboxing this slide called 2.2 My Notes. And it's again putting each one of the text entry fields or data entry fields into a scrolling panel. And it's using the exact same variables. So it's pulling out whatever was previously typed and then you can continue to add to it. Now when you click the download button, all it's doing is it's actually just jumping to this slide here, which is essentially a duplicate. And the reason why I've done that is because if you're on this slide or you've light boxed, you've, you've clicked my notes and you see all your notes and you start typing in some new information, if you click download right away, it's not actually going to capture that new information in a PDF. It has to refresh this slide in some fashion. And so that's why I've got it just going over to a duplicate so we can do that refresh of the variable. So it's going to be 2.3 download that has the coding. The download button itself doesn't really do anything because initially when this starts now, it's going to execute JavaScript at the one second mark. The JavaScript it's executing is right here. You don't have to worry about this and don't edit any of this. Just copy these two lines in and that's all you need to do there. The other thing that's happening is there's a web object and this web object is configuring the look and the feel of the PDF that you're generating. Every time you edit this HTML document, which I'm going to show you in a moment, you would have to delete this web object and reinsert it to ensure that Storyline is picking up on the latest version of that HTML document. So I'm going to delete it right now so you can see that process. So you just go up to insert and you go to web object and you go to the location where the HTML document resides. Now, when you download this bundle, you'll notice that there's a subfolder called Notes. If you just go to the Notes folder, that's all you need to do. Just go to Notes and say select that folder, and then leave all the other defaults as they are. Click OK. The web object is going to come in and fill in the entire screen. So just shrink it down and put it someplace so it's not overlapping something else. So right about in the center there, that's fine. No one's going to see this when it's actually published out. When you are doing your publishing, the other thing to do is if you are testing the configuration, the look and the feel, the layout, the fonts, and all that kind of stuff, 
then a good way to do this is to just publish the single slide only and then look at that using a browser that would support playback of JavaScript locally. But if I just do this really quickly right now so you can see. So course notes, and we don't want the entire project. We just want a single slide and we'd like that to be the download slide 2.3 and click OK. And it's going to go ahead and um, publish that single slide. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this up. And I'm going to open it up with Internet Explorer locally here. And you see that once I do that, it comes up saying, well, do you want to run the scripts? And you say, yes, allow the block content. And it will run this one single slide. Now, at this point, it's automatically executing the JavaScript that's generating the document. You see it wants to open or save it. So if we just say open, it's going to show us what that looks like. So again, it's devoid of any of the variable content, but it's a really quick and easy way just to publish a single slide, look at it locally, and make sure that the logo is where you want it to be, and the fonts and the colors and all that kind of stuff. All right, that's all I wanted to show you there. So now the other component here is the rise piece, and the rise piece is just like 2.2. So it's doing the same thing. It's just the download button is just leading to this page that has the exact same code on it, same web object, same JavaScript. So you don't have to change anything here, except if your HTML documents change, you're going to have to update this object too. Then you're going to have to publish the scene. And let's just do that quickly. I'll just go through the steps. I won't actually publish it. The rise scene. And you want to publish to review 360. So just the rise scene and whatever the course name is in review, and then go ahead and publish that. And you have to publish it up to review in order for rise to be able to see it. Okay, so here we are in review, and you can see that there's a published course here, the rise notes, and it's just the single scene. And then once you've done that, you pop over to rise into the lesson where the storyline block is to go or uh, the lesson where the storyline block is to be updated. Once you insert the storyline block, if anything's changed, you're going to have to go back into settings, click the change button, and then select your course. And it's going to do an, a refresh of that course. Also under settings, I've cleared up the padding. I've made the storyline object medium size, and I made the background white just to match the uh, background of the published output. And speaking of which, let's just again pop over to Storyline. The one thing you do want to be careful of is when you are publishing out, you want to make sure that the player settings are for Rise. I'm using the modern player here. If the menus are on when you publish, then it's going to look like this in Rise, and you probably don't want that. So before publishing to Rise, just turn the menus and controls off. Okay, so the next step is to go through the information on how to build that HTML file to generate the PDF document. So the code used is called PDF Make. The documentation does go through a lot of detailed information on formats that you can use, the lists, headers and footers, and all the basic code snippets that you can use to build your PDF. In addition to that, it has a playground. So if you want to take a look at, well, what would it look like if I wanted to do columns, what would I have to do? And it gives you some good examples on the right hand side of some column formats. This is live code, so you can change this code on the left hand side and see what it's going to do on the right hand side. You can take a look at how you'd format tables, other bulleted lists, you can play with the margins of your document, and also work with images. So it has all that information. It's pdfmake.org. Also under sources is where you download the latest version of the code, which is under build. And in the template, I've provided the latest version of code in the folder called notes, and it's under PDF make. All right, there's an HTML file. It's called course notes.html. And this is the document you use to configure how you want your PDF to look. This line of code is trying to find the storyline player. Once it does, it grabs the variables that you've used. So we use drag note, slide note, global note, and it's just using some generic variable names in the code to represent each of those. And then it has the date. And then there's a whole bunch of garbly group here. And this is the logo that I'm using. You have to convert your logo into a data URL for it to work in this PDF. There's a URL right here. Uh, if you just go to this location, it'll have a screen that allows you to upload your logo and it generates this 
whole section. So basically you're just highlighting from this apostrophe. You don't want to delete the apostrophe, you need that. You're highlighting this whole section. It goes on for quite a little bit, oops, a little far there, and right to the other uh, quote or apostrophe. And you replace it with your data URL code. You might have to play with the width a little bit. And also, I'm just gonna slide back up here. I've set this up to be a background image. I actually formatted my logo to have extra space on the left-hand side and the top side, so it would be positioned properly on the page. And then down below is the header. So where you have the name of whatever your project is, subtitle, and the date is displayed. And again, if I bring up this document, you can see what I'm talking about here. So the art of digital learning is this here. You can see that the logo is all of that just before. My course notes, the date, and then the main part of the, the document is the draggable note, which is just the word draggable note. It's using a style called item title, which I'll show you in a second. And then it just has some text. This is the first note taken. You can see it over here. And then the text in purple is a variable, and that variable is called note one. Backslash ands are just enters or spaces. And then there's a table. This table here has no borders. It has one header row, which is slide in note, and it says don't break the rows. So this is going to be quite a long note. So we want this to be contained on a single page. And then the second table has none of that. So it's actually using uh, borders by default. It's not worried about keeping header rows together or breaking rows. It's actually set up in columns more than it is in rows. So it's a slightly different format. Down at the bottom are the styles. So the styles are used in different areas. So the main title is 14 point, it's indigo, and the subtitle is navy. And you can kind of go through that and see it's pretty straightforward. At the bottom is the command that's used to generate the actual PDF. And here you just type that name in. And then when the user downloads it, it's automatically given that name. So hopefully this gives you a good overview. I know it was a lengthy video. And if you have any questions, just fire off an email.